Now all the way back at the start of 2021, I made the decision to replay what in my opinion was one of the greats, the original Dying Light game. This kind of came out of the announcements that Dying Light 2 was going to be released the following year, and obviously I felt like I had to be ready. So fast forward to now, Dying Light 2 Stay Human is already out. I'll be talking about that game in another video, but for now I just kind of want to talk about the first game. With Dying Light 2 having a massive price tag of $60, most people who have seen some of the action are going to want to just jump into the first game and try it, which is considerably cheaper and I'm here to tell you how much of a good idea that is going to be. Now, Dying Light is one of my favourite games of the last generation. It has all the aspects that I love in games. Free roaming in a nice open space, zombies and an impressive fighting system. The only thing that really irritates me about the game is how the weapons just break and you can only really repair them a certain amount of times before they are just gone forever. Now, even though I say this annoys me, I completely understand that they need to do this, otherwise you would get some OP weapons and you never really have to worry about doing anything ever again. Whereas this adds to the fact that you need to keep exploring and you need to keep finding weapons and upgrades, otherwise the game will just get stale. I think one of the things that Techland did incredibly well with the first game was just constantly updating the game. They gave it so much support over the years that it was out, and there's always something that you could be doing on a game which added so much to the excitement. Even after the main game, there's so much DLC that they've released. There's a massive one called The Following, which is basically like an entirely new game within the world of Dying Light, which follows the same character, built on the same engine, it's just open space and they've added so much in just on that DLC alone. Now let's talk a little bit about the story. The story for the first game was good, it wasn't really the best thing going, but it was still good. There were a lot of twists and turns that gave it so much life and a bit more to actually enjoy. A lot of the time was the story was just kind of like fetch quests, you keep getting introduced to new people that you need the help of or the assistance of in order to just, you know, help you gain their trust, you'd have to go and collect stuff for them. Even if the faction they're helping will inevitably stab you in the back, you still have to make sure they get that box of Twinkies that has been saved from the war. It's just... There was a lot of fetching, and it was a little bit irritating. But then, some of the side quests are really fun and enjoyable, whereas others felt very void of life, and were just kind of there to sort of drag the game out a little bit, give you a bit more content. I do, however, feel like the story is the section of the game that gets a lot better within the following DLC, which is why I'm excited to see how the second game pans out, because they really did improve a lot of things in the DLC from the original game, so it shines a lot of hope for the second. There are quite a few things that you can do in this game though, aside from the missions. Be that just running around and exploring, or just wanting to go on like massive killing sprees, all of it is really possible. There's some extra bits that you can do, like replayable sections of the game, the main one that springs to mind for me are the quarantine zones. These are basically like small sandbox missions. You get given an area and you either have to go in and clear the zone or you have to go and collect stuff from inside. All in all they're quite fun to do, but they are repeatable. I wouldn't recommend it just for the fact that it can be kind of boring doing the same mission over and over unless you're trying to level up some of your skills, but if you get a couple of friends in to play it with you, it, they can be quite fun. The biggest thing about this game that really sets it apart from other zombie killing games for me is honestly just the way that the game works, like the gameplay mechanics alone are so, so fun. This game plays incredibly well. The best way to describe it is just try and think of a mixture between Mirror's Edge and Dead Rising with the combination of melee weapons and ranged weapons. It makes for a fun time just running around and honestly just beating the living hell out of the zombies. There is, a, however, one thing about this game that really sets itself out from like the rest of the zombie-based game, and that's how the time works in-game. So during the day you have zombies just walking about, occasionally there's some runners, but for the most part it's just very tame, it's very easy to like navigate, you just always have to try and remember that the floor is always lava, and don't touch the ground, and you will basically never run into a zombie. However, when it comes to night, it's a completely different ball game. The way the game looks, it makes it a lot harder for you to see in the dark, which obviously it's a given, but you're just given a torch to use. Obviously if you need to sneak, it's probably best to turn it off, 
but then you literally can't see. During the night, all of your experience points that you gain for parkour and combat are all doubled, which would make you think that it's probably the best time to try and level up. But even with how right that is, it does come with some ridiculous consequences. As it turns to night time, the game gets considerably harder. There's a much greater number of zombies and even different types of zombies. There's one called a volatile, and these guys take a beating and they give an even bigger one. Honestly, I would say that they're probably the hardest aspect of this game, aside from, you know, accidentally falling off a building. There's a load of features that make the game better, like once you level up your parkour enough, you unlock a grappling hook to use for when you're running around the buildings, and it not only makes the game easier to traverse, but it's also a lot of fun. The leveling system is decent, but I feel like there's some stuff that you can unlock through the tree that doesn't really help all too much and can be a little bit lacklustre. This is something that I'm hoping that gets improved on in the second game, but then again it could just be that it was built for someone that plays a game very differently than I do. If you're looking for a zombie game to play and you can't afford the price of Dying Light 2, I highly recommend the first game. Even though it was released so long ago, like the game still looks beautiful. I honestly feel like if you're wanting to play Dying Light 2, you need to play the first game. I'm unsure yet if the stories really cross over, but I'm sure some DLCs will see that they do one day. There's a couple of nods in the first game as well, but it's such a great game and I would highly recommend it, whether you're playing console or PC. But with that there is a warning. So far since I've been replaying it since the second game came out, I have found there's a lot of people that are playing using mods on PC. Obviously I feel like on console this will be very different, but it can somewhat ruin the sense of the game. So, you know, take that warning. And I hope you guys are having a good day, and I'll catch you next time.